Ready, Mr. Bruce? Yes. All right. I now call to order the new Carlisle City Council meeting, Monday, February 5th, 2018 at 7 p.m. This is Burn. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Light. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. All present. All right. Tonight we'll have an invocation by Vice Mayor Lindsay. Heavenly Father, we come to you again this evening, Father, to do the city's business, to look over our budgets. Father, we ask you to bless each and every one in this room, bless our fire department, our police departments, our military, and this great country, along with this great city that we live in, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're to the invitation of the flag at the back. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Action on the minutes. So we motion we accept it. Do a second that? Second. Okay. Motion, yes. second? Okay. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Accepted six soon. All right. How about Special you? Mr. Mayor, all due respect, should Mr. Shammy abstain from voting yes on that since he was not a member? Yes. yes. So actually, you should change your vote to abstention. You should change your vote to abstention because you were not a member at that time. Okay. So, yeah. Can I catch that? Special meeting? No move. Right. Second. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Light. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Mr. Shammy. He can vote on that one. He can vote on that yes. one? I skipped it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's all right. Sorry. It's okay. He can vote yes. on that one. Okay. All right. You're good, Mrs. Burn. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, communications. We have the Youth Tobacco Initiative Prevention slash Tobacco 21 presentation by Ellen Evans, Patterson, and Wendy Hyde. So if you guys don't mind going to the back to present yeah. the podium. Sworn in to the 170. No, he was oh, no. in on the 30. You're right. I was thinking, oh, oh yeah, it's another okay. extension. All right. <laughs> I think especially me last. Yeah. Sorry. I'm over here. That's okay. Are we good? Yes, ma'am. Are we ready? Uh, Mayor Reynolds, City Council, I appreciate the opportunity to come to speak to you tonight. My name is Elle Evans Peterson. I'm with the Clark County Combined Health District, and I work on a grant that is working primarily on preventing chronic disease. And so it's a CDC funded grant that is an Ohio Department of Health grant. We've had it for uh, about two and a half years in this county, and we have about two and a half years left as a five year grant project. Um, and I've been pleased to be able to work with Randy and Howie, lots of our partners here in Western Clark County and New Carlisle to work on things like improving the playgrounds and working on establishing some smoke free zones in the parks and the playgrounds and the ball field. Um, and we look forward to being able to continue that work and be able to expand it in 2018 and 2019, which will be the final year of our grant. Um, so the grant does come with some project funding, and so that's very important in helping to not only help to communicate the projects, but also to be able to buy things like the baby swings that we just installed. And I know a few of you were here last December when it was nice and frigid, and we dedicated it and had a little ribbon cutting outside in December. Um, we'll, we'll hopefully do a little warmer time of the year, hopefully get it done by the end of the summer or early fall 
this year. But um, at any rate, it's been my pleasure to be able to work on this grant and to serve this community. And tonight I have brought along Wendy Hyde. Um, she's with the Tobacco 21 Initiative, and she's going to talk a little bit about um, this program and the things that are happening in the state of Ohio and throughout the United States and how that might be able to benefit everyone here in New Carlisle. so much for taking some time out of your busy schedules I'm sure to have us here this evening and I also want to say what a wonderful little town um, or city um, you have here it really reminded me of where I grew up I grew up in a very agricultural community my dad was a lumberman my uncle is a farmer and I grew up picking potatoes we used to get off from school in the fall um, for three weeks to pick potatoes and then pick rocks from the fields in the spring so I'm very much at home driving in and seeing this um, wonderful community what I'm here to talk to you about tonight is looking to raise the tobacco purchase age from 18 to 21. And the organization I work for, this is a national organization, um, we have been successful at raising the tobacco purchase age um, in five different states and in 290 municipalities and counties throughout the country. We have um, worked with nine communities in Ohio to raise the tobacco purchase age from 18 to 21. And some of you are saying, you know, what's the big deal? Why raise the purchase age? It's fine at 18. Um, why 21? And so I'm here to kind of share a little personal story um, about why tobacco prevention, why policy work became important to me. So about three years ago, I guess, I was working at a small Christian private school teaching health and PE, kind of going about my business. It was kind of my entry back into my professional career after taking about 10 years off to raise my children. And I went to pick up my son from basketball practice. He was 13 at the time. And he looked at me. We had, you know, some conversations. You know, like sometimes you talk to your parents and sometimes you don't. Well, um, he asked me, he says, hey, Mom. He's like, do you know what vapes are? And I'm like, yeah, I know what vapes are. He's like, well, some kid was selling them out of the locker today for $10. I said, OK. So we had a conversation about e-cigarettes and vaping and, and nicotine and how that has, you know, kind of become a new trend among at least the students at um, the community which I live in. So we got home, he asked my husband the same question. My husband is in the medical field, and um, when Henry asked him, my husband's like, yeah, I kind of know, but wasn't really certain about what they really are. And so this led me to, to start thinking, I'm like, huh, I said, if you know, my husband doesn't know, and the kids are talking about it, they're starting this initiation into these products. And you know, how many other parents don't know? How many other kids are being swindled by the large tobacco companies into this new product that is then going to give them a nicotine addiction that's going to last them the rest of their life? So I kind of got passionate about it. And an opportunity came up that I started to work with a, this prevention organization through a grant. And now um, with Preventing Tobacco Addiction Foundation for Tobacco 21. So that was my initial um, introduction and why this has become so important to me. Mostly, I have four kids, right? My oldest is in you know, um, high school now. My youngest is nine. And whatever I can do to try to prevent another generation from becoming the generation of our parents. Like, when I was in school, or I could ask any of you, how many of you go to a restaurant and have been asked smoking or not smoking? Back in the day, right? Okay. serve um, and work in restaurants through high school and college. And that was always something, you know, the smoking section or non-smoking section. Well, fortunately, in Ohio, we passed a law several years back saying, hey, you know what? Every public space restaurant is non-smoking. So we have an entire generation now that has never been asked that question. So tobacco has no longer been normalized. And that's why we're seeing cigarette use down, right? The typical cigarette product use is down to about 8% in some communities. cigarettes and jewels and um, smokeless tobacco products are still pretty heavy depending on which community you're talking about in Ohio. So this law then restricts this restricts youth access and here's how it works. Again, I go back to my second oldest son now who's 14. Every morning he gets on the early bird bus to go to the high school for an early language class. Every morning he has access to a 
18 year olds and 18 year olds have access to him. So in other words, if an 18 year old goes to the package store before he heads to school and buys his tobacco product that morning or his chew or his cigarette or his um, vape, he has access to share that with my son on the bus or as they approach school property. Okay, or my son can purchase it from him. Well, my son doesn't have access as a 14 year old to 21 year olds in his social circle. Right, many of you probably don't have access if you're 13, 14, to 21 year olds. Um, and we also know that 13, 12, 13, 14 is the original or the time when students are most, or youth are most introduced to tobacco products. So by just shifting that age from 18 to 21, it restricts almost an entire group, an entire generation of um, young people from having access to that to nicotine delivery device, which is going to set them up for a lifelong addiction. Okay, and we also know that 94% um, of lifelong smokers started smoking or using tobacco product before the age of 18. Um, so that's the whole step that we're looking to do, um, is restrict that youth access. Um, additionally, with that, um, lost my train of thought here for a second. With that said, that um, we also know that two percent of the sales of 18 that go to 18 to 21 year olds provide 90 percent of the use to under those under the age of 18. All right, so two percent of sales of all tobacco products provide 90 percent of the. Uh, to the city of New Carlisle, and hopefully you'll become our partner in deciding to make this something that New Carlisle takes on as a way to show your families, to show your community that um, the young people in your community are important to you, and that you want to, again, to improve the generation that's to come next. Do you have any questions for what this looks like? It's kind of a very informal or formal setting, but. Awesome. Questions for? Mm -hmm. No, ma'am. When you want to tell, I'm sorry, the uh, question to like where it's passed, where it's all oh. sure. <laughs> Thank you. 
33.4% of Clark County students reported having tried cigarettes by the age of 18. 11.3% of Clark County students smoke cigars, cigarellos, or little cigars. One of the reasons those are big hot ticket items is because they're two for 99 cents. Right, it's cheap. Um, nine, and they're flavored. Uh, the tobacco industry has done a great job, again, at protecting its flavored products. So when things smell like strawberry, or they taste like strawberry, or cotton candy, kids, right? But they're not marketing to our youth. 9.1% um, of Clark County students reported using chewing tobacco, snuff, or dip. Okay. Um, interesting backstory here when it comes to chewing tobacco. I also teach at um, a local university where I'm from. And last year, a student in a photo voice project took a picture of his roommate's drawer in his dorm room. Okay, two tents. And I said, you know, why? Why is he saving all his tents? He's like, oh, he doesn't know. He has six large trash bags in his garage at home of tobacco tins that he has been using. He is he started using smokeless tobacco when he was 12. Um, and as a 19-year-old has a large addiction um, to chewing tobacco. And I'm not sure what he's saving for. He thinks he's going to build something someday with it. So, but another interesting part to this is the bottom survey that I have listed here. And what we do know is that youth who participate or who have a nicotine addiction also are more likely to participate in risky behaviors. So things like um, current smokers, you look down at uh, the chart that I have here, current smokers um, having had sexual intercourse, 77% of our current smokers, 24% are non-smokers, have had a drink of alcohol in the past 30 days, 63% of cur our current smokers, 15% are not, have used marijuana in the past 30 days, 50% have that are current smokers, 8% have not, misused prescription drug medication in the past 30 days, 38% are current smokers, 6% are not. There is a huge correlation as well with the way nicotine affects the inner part of our brain and it's very similar to the way that oh, the opioid crisis has affected or opioids affect that center part of our brain. Okay? And we all know that we are in the midst of the opioid crisis. And then of course, attempted suicide. This one's the most telling. Okay? Attempted suicide in the past 12 months. Current smokers, 38%. Non-smokers, 7%. Okay? Nicotine affects the adolescent brain differently than it affects the adult brain. Okay? If we can protect our youth, and protect that part of the brain before their brain is fully developed, which, by the way, happens at about 25, 26, um, it's kind of the reason why I look at my kids sometimes, I'm like, what in the world were you thinking? Right? Well, they're thinking like an adolescent. Um, this doesn't cost the community anything. It's simply a way, again, of saying to your community that families are first, kids are first, our youth are important. That's what um, it's all about. So, any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, what is, do you have the number, if you said it, I apologize That's okay. for asking. Is e-cigarettes or traditional cigarettes the higher number of use in teenagers? Is it cigarettes still higher as far as choice or e-cigarettes? I'll be honest with you, it depends on the population that you're looking at. So in other words, the demographics of the population. Right. Um, in some communities, it's still chewing tobacco or dip. Other communities, it's still a traditional tobacco product, like a cigarette. Um, and, but e-cigarettes, quite frankly, have changed the landscape completely. And that's because there's no, it's like the Wild West, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Um, cigarettes have to be sold or are supposed to be, although we do know that Lucy's are being sold quite frequently in Clark County. Um, packs of cigarettes are supposed to be sold in a pack of 20, correct? So then you have that pricing where it gets a little more expensive and harder to have access to. Um, but when it comes to vaping products and e-cigarettes, they contain nicotine. There's no legislation. They can market to kids. Um, they can flavor them, unlike traditional tobacco products, which cannot be flavored. Um, cigars don't fall under that typical cigarette product either. The tobacco industry is just brilliant in their marketing and the way they kind of loophole their way into things. Um, but e-cigarettes are certainly, like I said, this new product on 
the market. And if I ask these kids, they probably know what a jewel is. Um, it's about this big, and it can easily be hidden in your pocket. It carries quite a bunch of nicotine, and it's very hard to detect. And so it's become a new product of choice among our young people um, as well. Yes? Now, do you have like that proposed legislation? I don't see it here. I didn't put it in here today. We wanted to kind of give you some basic information to kind of introduce it to you. Um, I can certainly get that to you. What we're encouraging is the model legislation that was put forth in Columbus, um, which has the enforcement piece that looks at it from um, a county health department in doing the enforcement piece similar to what you would have for food, the food industry. Um, unlike some legislation that has been passed in the past already in some cities, is enforcement by police. We do not want this to be an enforcement by police issue. Um, per se, what we'd like it to do is to be an enforcement by the county health department where you get a tobacco retail license and to sell your product and the license and the fees for that license are also what covers the enforcement piece um, for it. Additionally, what we've seen structured in the past and the way it's currently structured by our state level government is that currently if someone's selling to an underage individual and gets caught, it's that poor cashier that's making $8.25 an hour that gets the brunt of um, the penalties. The penalties, thank you. Um, our legislation, the way we'd like it to be written out in the ordinances, it's on the retailer. So it's not on that poor cashier that's just doing their job. Um, it affects the retailer's license um, if they continue to progress and sell to those who are underage. It also, from a retailer perspective, quite frankly, it makes it easier because it's a one card system, right? We're not having a two card system like we currently have uh, where you're supposed to be um, carding for that 18 year old to make sure they're old enough to buy tobacco products and that 21 year old that they're old enough to buy um, alcohol products. So sim simplifying it to a one card system is really attractive actually to retailers. Right. Council, anything else? Audience? Thank you so much, Mrs. All right, thank you. So we have another communication. It's the Health Community Award presentation to the City Manager and City Council from Ella Evans Patterson. the city of New Carlisle for taking steps in preventing chronic disease. And so this is for your work in the parks, in the New Carlisle Farmers Market, and also in your work with the smoke-free parks. So, tell me. Shake your hand. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, guys.
to 7 p.m. and I will be at the Church of the Brethren. And we do have an update on the green bin. Uh, the road is now open, effective 6 p.m. today. Yes, sir. So we would like to appreciate, uh, uh, thank you to all of uh, the uh, citizens and business owners and anyone else who traveled down 571 who got, uh, got bypassed. We do apologize for that. The road is up and going. That was all I have for my city manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council, any questions for the city manager or administration? Mr. Cobb, you said you had something earlier. Chief Trustee, I'd like to thank you, uh, Chief Ritter, Fire Department personnel, Bethel Township personnel, and their Chief Jacob for a well done job when we had our major incident on January 20th. You all exceeded quite a while, quite a bit there, and, and I want to compliment the department and yourself. Thanks, sir. Thank you, all of us. Council? Yes. All right. We're on here now to comments from members of the public. We have five minutes if you'd like to have any comments. All right. Hearing none. We're moving on to committee reports. None tonight. Resolution. Mrs. Berner. All right. Resolution 18-01R is introduction and action tonight. A resolution directing the Clark County Board of Elections to include in the primary election in the city of New Carlisle on May 8, 2018 for an additional levy for the New Carlisle Fire and EMS Department. Mr. Mayor, this is Sir Lauer. Make a motion to adopt resolution 18-01R. Second. Mr. Lighty. First. Lighty. Mr. Lighty. Could you first? And explanation of this resolution. This is the second and final piece of legislation that's needed to put um, levies on the ballot. We first started off, started off with the resolution. Um, of necessity. Um, once we got that back, we uh, certified the uh, millage rate that we'll get back from the auditor. And the final step is that resolution directing the Board of Elections to put it on the ballot. And this is for a three mil additional operating levy for our fire and EMS departments. Council, any questions? Mrs. Byrne. Right. Um, Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Sheen. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Light? Yes. That's it. Yeah. Moving on to the next one. Resolution 18-02R. Introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution appointing representatives to the Transportation Coordinating Committee. Council? Does anyone else not have that resolution? Because I think I missed it. What do, you, what do you guys have on your back? I have fire department levies and ordinance. Yeah. We all you have a resolution, resolution. Okay. Yeah, I mean, two okay. resolutions. So, no. I just realized that I do apologize. Resolutions can be introduced and voted on the same meeting, so that's what we need. Read that. Okay. <laughs> And resolution appointing representatives to the Transportation Coordinating Committee, whereas the City of New Carlisle is a member of the Clark County Springfield Transportation Coordinating Committee, and whereas, as such, a member of the City must abide by the bylaws of the committee, and whereas said bylaws require that members and their alternates be nominated for their respective seats during a triennial nomination period, whereas Vice Mayor William Lindsay has been selected as the main representative from the New Carlisle City Council with Councilman William Cook as the alternative representative. And whereas now a new alternative member must be chosen for the term beginning January 1, 2018 and ending on December 31st, 2020. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City of New Carlisle City Council that the official members to the Transportation Coordinating Committee shall now be Vice Mayor Councilman William Cook. Council. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion. We 
No, everything's fine. I'm so sorry to interrupt. 1801 was an attachment to the resolution of necessity. Get past 1801, resolution 1802 is right behind it. Because 1801 was attached to 1802. So if you flip past, past the certificate, resolution 1802 is not that. I've got 1802. 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 I've got Mrs. Garner. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Hobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Seven. Ordinances there is one tonight. Mrs. Clark. Ordinance 18-02. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. We move to adopt ordinance 18-02. Second. <coughs> and an explanation of this ordinance. This is the uh, ordinance that will allow the city to enter into a contract for the uh, asset management for our water tower. Council. Question. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Mr. Kiko, can I put you on the spot, please? Absolutely. Thanks. I appreciate it. You won't put me on the spot. All right. Do you mind just, since we've got a decent sized crowd tonight, do you mind just going over just the basics of what we're going to be doing with this as far as what all is going to be done? Absolutely. I can start in the basic of terms. Uh, Senate Bill 2 came out from the Ohio, uh, from the legislative, uh, state legislatures of Ohio, stating that uh, basically if you have water treatment, you're going to have an asset management program. Um, rules are being a, a developed by the EPA currently and by October 1st of 2018 we will have to have an asset management plan. Well what's nice about this water tank program is it will be part of the asset management program. How this one works is there is a, a company that will come in and for a fee and for however many years you want to they will take they basically take ownership um, of your tower. So year one what this, our program is is year one they're going to take the exterior and give it a coating. We're gonna add a mixer inside because we do have issues because the water does not flow that much in and out of that tower. We have chlorine that doesn't stay uh, mixed as well. It's not a health hazard, but it will help make the, uh, it'll help with water quality and stir it up. Uh, so once that is done in year one, we will pay an annual fee of 115,500. $115, and this agreement, initial agreement is six years. So basically they're taking the total cost and divide it in six annual payments. Year seven on is all up to what New Carlisle wants to do. So we get to year seven and we agree to pay, I think it's 50 some thousand, year eight, 50 some thousand, year nine, and then year 10, they're scheduled 10 or 11 to do the exterior again, and then year 13 or 14 do an interior again. So the idea of asset management is get this program in and get it cheaper in the long run for paintings. So we get back to year two, it's an inspection. Year three, um, what we're probably gonna do is we're, we're scheduled to have a draining, but uh, we may skip that draining and then because year four, we're gonna be draining anyway for an interior. An interior paint job is a full strip, coating, structure, um, all that work done. So then uh, year five, year six are inspections and then we have paid off our obligation to this company and then we can cancel that agreement at that time and then we will take sole owner, basically sole ownership back into New Carlisle for all the maintenance, paying companies to do that work. 
and during the six years they cover any and all issues with that tank paint chipping um, uh, any kind of warranties anything that goes wrong with that tank it's 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 in their hands um, outside of a natural disaster um, the other thing with that too is their I was asked, you know, what the paint warranty is. And it was a good question because the paint actually has a 15-year um, warranty on it. Well, it's, it, it, it works like your shingles. Your shingles come with a 30-year warranty, but that doesn't mean that a hailstorm doesn't, that, you know, they're not covered against a hailstorm or any kind of excess damage. So if they put the coating on correctly and they find down the road that the actual paint itself is defective, which usually by the first many years that it's in service, you'll know that or not, um, uh, they'll, they'll fix that. But um, that's basically the, the, the plan in a nutshell on how this works. So we're, we're, the cost does seem a little high in the beginning, but we're doing some catch up with it. Is it, is it up to, um, and not that it's a big part of the project as far as how important, but uh, the color of the tower will it just say the same color blue or how? Well, it's pretty light now. It's actually the color will come in a little darker. Um, it actually was a pretty dark blue before, not like uh, blue jeans or even as dark as your shirt. Mm -hmm. um, and then New Carlisle will be put back up in um, those type of letters and in an even darker blue. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Council, anything else? Just one quick follow up. Absolutely. I already know the answer, but for those who don't, when was the water tower last serviced and painted on the exterior? I, I believe it was it was installed in 1974, and I still haven't found the document. I got a spec book from 1984, but I don't know if it's been done. Uh, I haven't been able to dial that in yet, but I have a spec book that says that it was going to be done. So I'm, I'm guessing at least if it hasn't been done, it was done in 84. So 30 years or more. Mm. All right, that's all I have. Council on Pants? Ms. Berner. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Jamie? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Other business, Mrs. Burr? Um, Congressman Warren Davidson holds his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 until 2 p.m. And our next thing is our budget work session. All right. So we're going to go into our budget work session. I think we should take a five-minute break so we can do the Jump into it. Do you want to tell the high school people? Oh, yeah. For the high school students, if you guys want to come up and get your signature, you got your campus sign. We can do that now, or you can stay throughout the budget for session and get more hours. It's up to you. All right. Welcome to our work session in regards to the Colossus budget. We are on page 10. That's where we left off the last meeting. All right, Mr. Bridge. Now he made a roll. We're far away. All right. We've got 30 to go. We are so close. Dr. Mayor, what page are you starting on? Page 10. That's where we had. That was the last page we were back on. Uh, before, we, before we proceed, if I can get an update, there we left with some questions last time. Um, if we go to. services and it was budgeted for 20 
$20,000, and the question we had was building communication to measure about $20,000 too much. The answer to that is expenses are there for the gas and electric of the city building and, and garage. The finance director has recommended to lower it to $15,000, uh, right. but we should not go anywhere below that. So is council okay with the communication services? Because then you get the gas and electric. Yeah, gas and electric 12 and then communication 20 to 15, right? Correct? Yeah. No? Well, he said communication services. And then gas and electric. And then he said it goes to gas and electric, so oh. I'm yeah. guessing community yeah. services. Yeah. Yeah. We've been expensing the gas and electric out of there, so we might have to relabel the actual title. Okay. So communication oh, services. Well, I'll, I'll, we'll check to see if that needs to be corrected this year's budget and do it. We will answer that on the 12th. All right, so don't touch it yet. Don't touch that don't one touch yet. That. Okay. okay. All right, so let's look at the other one. We had some other, we had some other page on board 24. General Fund miscellaneous. Same page. We go to 101.2400.53510. Which is computer software and hardware. And also, there should be an administration services on that as well. So it should say computer software and hardware slash administration. That was the 10000 one? Um, that is the one for $10,000. Um, and that is. We use that for contractual help. Um, we have a gentleman by the name of Mr. Drennan come in and help with some year, uh, monthly and year-end reports, and also um, payroll consulting with our old former accounts payroll. So we estimated at nine, uh, ten thousand in the budget. Um, our finance director is recommending that it can be reduced to six thousand dollars. Okay. Is council okay with reducing it to four thousand dollars? Yeah, four thousand or six. We're reducing it down four thousand. Down four thousand to six. Right. Are we okay with that. Okay. And now is all the other. We will uh, get the uh, first question streamlined and get a solid answer for everyone, and we will visit that one on the twelfth. All right. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So we will pick up where we left off. All right. Um, the format we used last time, is that still okay? Um, I had a discussion with uh, Mayor Reynolds. I thought it was one of the best, if not best, budget work sessions that I have ever been a part of. Um, so I do like that format. If you want to stick with that, you guys can discuss. We are here to answer your questions. I think we the format will, works, works fine for us yep. up here. So. Go ahead. We are here for we are all ears. All right. So transfer in uh, for our page 10. Randy, do you want to skip this page because what will happen is when we actually get to those individual funds, the transfers will be listed there and we can actually look at the funds in depth. Um, do you want to focus on the pool fund? We know that 35, we can always jump to the pool thing here and get that out of the way. However you guys want to do it. I mean, we can either start with this or do you want to go to each individual fund so we actually can see how it's being spent instead of just seeing a number? It doesn't matter to me. I mean, it would probably be better to see it as a whole. I think so, too. All right, so jump to the pool. Jump to the pool. Okay, so that is going to be we'll look at that. It's it's 505. No. It starts right on page now. 34. Uh, 33, I do apologize, revenue. 33? 33. 33 of 40. So the transfer at the bottom of 35,000. Um, 34 has all the wages and everything else. So you have 33 is your revenue and 33, 4 is your expenses. 66. 66. Red, would you like to? No. It's one I don't know. That's why. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mr. Bridge, would you like to? Start with the pool and going through the expense like we did last time. So basically, everything below contractual up for negotiations. Um, wages we can't touch, Medicare, fringe benefits, personnel services, those are all pretty set. Yeah. Training, travel, and transportation, you can look at that. I think it's 500 in there. Uh, your contractual, as with anything contractual, I, I kind of not 
cost any of those. Um, so you're looking at your supplies, materials, your capital, um, and your miscellaneous. We got to pause for a minute so we can switch the tape. Does everyone still have their capital improvement plan? Yep. Yep. You guys want to switch to flip to a. So your capital right now, what we have is twenty-one thousand. The pool maintenance, pool maintenance is twenty eighteen. Replace two filters, major crack repair twenty eighteen. Repair of unforeseen weather damage, including equipment in each year eighteen to twenty two. Paid for by pool fund general fund. Um, your other capital purchase on there is obviously your paint and seal pool. Thousand per filter. That's 
uh, the six plus a thousand for paint and steel at seven thousand. So I think the, I think a, uh, a ten thousand dollar capital outlay would cover those expenses. But it, again, if the filter, if the if the uh, boiler goes out, well, the twenty two thousand I don't think would cover all that anyways. Right. Right. The other part of that is the um, because of the deep well water loss that we were kind of experiencing last year. Mm -hmm. That's in there too to get repaired. That is a, we were going on about six or seven years ago and we had a company come in and they drill, inject, and put an epoxy through the bottom. And there's is a per, per foot, we spent 10,000 just in it, it, 12, 24, like 36 feet worth of line. So it doesn't take long to, but that was in there in case we got in here after this winter, being the winter we've had with this deep freeze and seeing some major issues. So that was a backup to have uh, some crack repair put in there as part of that capital. Okay. Would that balance the budget? I didn't think it would. I'm, I'm missing the part of the extra revenue that you were talking, that you were suggesting. The, I, uh, I took 20,000. Transfer in, I, transfer I, I had in. figured it 20,000. I put that in. And then on the capital outlay, I had figured it at 10,000. Put that in. We're 2,400 short. Where's the difference? Yeah, if, if we were oh, well, to I'm, I'm looking, I'm forgot the, <laughs> forgot the numbers there. Because, I, because when I did it at home, it came out to the 575. So we may, we're going to have to adjust that by $2,400. Yeah. I mean, so it'll have to be at least well, that, that would 12, just five. It And then balance at zero, correct? Which one? If we increased it that $2,400, that would just leave us an ending balance at zero. Probably should do more than that for a transfer in. Yeah. I mean, council, any comments? Well, the thing I'm afraid of is we finally have something that's going to actually make us money and bring people into New Carlisle. It would be a real dumb if we shot ourselves in the foot and not like cover all of our bases. So I want to make sure we have plenty in here to make sure that thing's up and running in case something breaks, we get it fixed immediately so we're not missing out on any uh, opportunities at the pool. Mr. Lowry, do you have anything? <laughs> um, I mean, the transfer end, yeah, I mean, I think it could be cut a little. Um, I mean, I think I see the trend where it's not going to need it unless something, I mean, as far as actual operational, everyday operational um, cost, I don't I don't think there's a worry there. But, yeah, I mean, you've always got the consideration of a bust line somewhere, a pump or whatever maybe. may be. Like two or three years ago, there was that four thousand dollar pump that went out. So, um, with that, we can't actually we can't actually cut the transfer in without cutting the right. uh, capital outlay as well because you have to make the books balance. Right. right. So, in your opinion, if you want, what would you, I mean? Uh, right now, we're twenty five hundred dollars off of balance and having the well. That's if we go with your suggestion. I mean, that's if we go with your suggestion. Yeah. We still have theirs, but. Before you go, I'm going to go to Mr. Cobb and see his hand up next. I just, sure. I just got right. a statement that might help you guys. All right. Go ahead. Um, this is a seasonal pool. It's only open for three four months out of the year. I had said to Colleen they can kind of make it down to about zero, but they can always reappropriate later. But she made a good point. Is it, it, since this happens late in the year, we won't catch it in time. So it is in your best interest to leave a little bit of a pad there for a first person things. Mr. Cobb? Mr. Larry, can you you might be able to answer a question for me? Yeah. The gate fee, a person that lives in the city versus one that lives outside the city, is there a difference on the gate fee? No, I think the gate, I think she, I don't know if you remember how, there's a, there's a different fee for party rentals, like if you rent the pool for you know, birthday parties, there's a different if you live in and out of the city, but as far as just daily walk-in, there's no difference, I don't believe. I think that uh, if you live outside the city, you should have to pay more because people inside the city are paying into the general fund. I'm not, just for reference, I'm not going to get too deep into this one just because I don't think I should. I mean, I'm listening, but well, I'm not going to put too much, you know what I'm saying? I, I would like, you, you said you thought it could be cut a little bit. I'd like to have your opinion what you thought it could be cut on the, on, on the capital outlay. Uh, me personally, I, I don't mind it 
staying where it's at because I think we've seen a good trend. But I mean, if you guys were wanting to cut it or lower it, I mean, it's, I mean, I, mean, I know in the last last year, I don't think we transferred a dime in. No, we didn't. If I if I remember correctly. So I, I mean, to me, it's not hurting us sitting there just in case. Well, do you want to go down the line and see how everyone feels about cutting or transferring or keeping it? I mean, I think that's the best way at this point to go. Mr. Shamley, if you'd like to kick us off. I mean, it's, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. No, so I was just saying, I mean, I've seen, we've seen, like I said, we've seen a good trend here, so I, I don't think it's any big concern to leave it where it's at. But that's just, like I said, I don't want to get too detail on it just for obvious reasons. Yeah. Mr. Shannon? I have no issues with it leaving there or... All right, so you, you keep it the same, just leave it as is? I mean, if it's going to be what Mr. Lindsay was talking about, if it's going to, you know, benefit then or not, I don't know. I also don't know. Mr. Marek, we have to guard again. Mr. Lighting. Um, I, I know eventually we have to find something to cut. It's just right now we have such a golden opportunity that we're sitting on. I would hate for something to go wrong and us not be covered. Yeah. So I would be okay with leaving this here as, as is. Okay. I, I feel, you know, just going back through it, there's. We absolutely have to have those filters. I mean, that's key, and I think sealing it. And that 35000 transfer in, I mean, we haven't spent it, and it just reverts back into the general fund. Right. So I would see a reason to keep the money there, personally. Personally. Uh, the only thing I would have a question is, is on is, if we do have to replace that boiler, that 35000 would be able to cover it if something tragic were to happen to that thing. So we might have to worry about transferring money in again, changing budget midstream or anything. So that's yeah, as a benefit too. Mr. Lindsay? If that boiler, you open up what, in uh, May, April? May. May, May? Say in the middle of June or July, all of a sudden that boiler quits working or blows up or whatever. The, uh, how quick can we get that fixed? Could we get it fixed this year? I mean, you said that you would probably be a replacement. At right. This point. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I'd have to get some. Um, we haven't really given up much. I mean, really, honestly, I haven't thought about how long would it take two weeks to get a rate pack in here. I mean, that's what it is. They're they're still in business. They still have them. I mean, the supply stores around. I could definitely find that out. Just so you know, this this question is, you know, how long will it take? I can probably get that back to you before the next budget work session to say, hey, if you're looking for the, the scenario of if this happens in the middle of the season, I think I can answer a few, a few of those questions answered. And, and you thought it would be, I thought you said around 15,000? Yeah, I think when we called RayPAC a year or two ago, I thought it was 15. When they put it in, I think it was 13. But I, I can get those two numbers figured out from Pickerel Brothers. Mr. Well, based on on the figures that Mr. Kiko gave me, the I don't I don't have a problem because I, how old is that is that unit that the boiler? Yes, ninety eight or ninety nine is when it was put in when the oh, wow. when the city took the pullback. Well, ho well, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't <laughs> blow up this year during a swim meet because that would be disastrous. We so, you. so I would be willing to concede to this and leave this this budget the way it is. Leave it at the 22 with the 35,000 transfer in. Mr. Cook. I believe the auditor questioned some of our accounting methods down there at the pool and recommended uh, a cash register, if my memory serves me right. It was, no, it was a, they, it was, they didn't want to put like the cash transfer. I remember they had put it in their report on page 32 in the state auditor's report. They said like they how the cash. Well, that was a, that was a misallocation, but I think that was through GAP, not us. Yeah, well, we the only recommendation that they made for us was um, actually for the pool. I think there was maybe a, a, a walk in that wasn't charged correctly, but then there's a, a gap. There's other things on it. They're always doing great recommendations for us to keep tight, especially in cash situations, the pool and the cemetery. Mm -hmm. That's my only concern, long we follow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Very good, Mr. Cook. Done. Mr. Cook? If that boiler went out, what would the revenue be? Would there be a big drop in the revenue if the boiler went out? It's just a rough idea. So we see a pretty significant drop once that water temperature gets below 80 degrees. And yeah, 50 drop. Um, no. I'm in favor of keeping it already bottled in the freezer. All right. I think we're keeping it the same. Can I make one comment too? Yes. Just because this is kind of new, well, for some of you with the transfer, the transfer does not, it's approved in our budget for our safety for the revenue that might be needed to the pool. It does not get transferred unless we need it for the pool. And that is already that okay, set amount that you've approved. So yeah. we have not had to do it the last two years. Mr. Otter has one last question. Then we'll get to your Ms. question. Oh, you know, I just had a couple questions on, I don't know if you can change, I don't know what you can and can't do as far as some of the line items for the pool. For example, I'm, I was looking for uh, pool parties. That's thrown in as far as, um, let's see, where's it at here? Pool parties, doesn't that go under miscellaneous? We put it in miscellaneous over the years, but now that you are getting more of it, um, we could probably make a couple more line items for the larger ones if you want those broken out. Yeah, that would be great. Since, uh, since the parties have really been picking up, it'd be nice to see. Separate that out and make it a separate one for people. If possible, please. That's not hard. You can do that. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, no. Mr. Lindsay. Does that also include the uh, that, that line item for the uh, the miscellaneous, does that include the schools with it too? Or, I, I don't, I'm trying to figure out how much we get from the schools. So it's all and, right. I mean, you may know, uh, I think uh, we get $3 a student, and that goes usually for three days. I think we usually average 100 students a day. Yeah, I don't know, like 350 bucks or something okay. each day, a plus, day? plus concession stands. Yeah. So. Okay. Which I'm sure they're eating a lot of those. Would it, would it be possible? I mean, I know. We, we try to rearrange your line items all the time. We, or add something to them. Could we, could we bust that out too, or have a different line for that too, possibly, or not? I mean, you know what you can do with your program or not. I don't know. I, I would, you can do some. That's what we were yeah. saying. When we started to pull a few years ago, miscellaneous was really miscellaneous. There's only a little bit in it. Now that we're starting to get more pull parties, more, um, we broke out the donations. like to know how much the schools, I mean, how often they come and I mean, how much we make okay. off the schools, okay. well, plus the parties, because they do a pretty good job on parties, I think. Mm -hmm. And there's always kids up there prior to the pool. Would it be beneficial also to, if, if possible, to make a line item for the toys they sell? Because that was something new that's picked up a lot, too. <laughs> toys. <laughs> and that's in miscellaneous. Okay. Well, if you'd rather leave it miscellaneous, that's fine. Let Less than a thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you have as much in the toys, but the pool party is definitely is okay. going to be a yeah. bigger of the miscellaneous total. Um, and then I'll double check on the schools. Okay. Okay. Or okay. just in the reports would be fine. Right. You know, if it, if it can't be on the on the line, I I right. Okay. okay. All right. So we're, we're good with that one. Um, then do you want to start off on page? Flip this open. Now. Well. The pool's been decided to leave the street. Yeah. Hey, did you want to jump around to the other fun things real quick? Because of the, if we can just get done with the transfers real quick, or we can be done with the general fund as a whole. As a whole? All right. Yeah, general bond retirement, we got $105,000 going in there. Those are four. So you want to skip this? Uh, uh, page 25. Yeah, 20, sorry. Page 20, 23. Yep, and then Twin Creeks is on the next page in 26. Even if we wanted to, we can't touch it. No, you can't yeah, do anything with that one. Now, I do want to pay attention to Twin Creeks because we had um, the some of the proceeds of the lots and then the settlement. So right now, the general fund is still having 80000 come in. But if you look at the Twin Creek difference from bond retirement balance, you get $293,000.
because the goal when we talked about this was to, can you have your neural on, your own fund paying for that Twin Creeks? Yeah. Keep this money in there because in 2020, no, 2020, we'll have an option to refinance again. And then we can take this amount and put it towards what we owe. So this council's still on that same path. Now, another thing this will allow you to do, next year or the year after the general fund sees a hit on anything, you have some time, you can take that 80,000 and you'll still have money in there to make the payment. I think so I'll let council decide on how they handle that. I think it's the best idea we have. I would rather keep that in there because some of that, um, well, probably most of it's in Star Ohio earning uh, interest. And then we go to refi and we've got the next call out date. We'll take that balance and we'll get with council. This will all be council's decision how you guys want to tackle that. Um, but we'll have a good chunk of change to put towards our principal balance. Yeah. How does council feel? Stay, stay the course? Yeah. I think that's what council had decided when sure. we oh. first got that. Money. It's a new council now. New well, council. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> rules change. To, to leave it there, I think we should leave it there. Mr. Cobb, do you, you think we should keep it the same? I agree with you. Okay. Okay. Well, I think we are done with the uh, general fund. Fantastic. Now on the street construction. We're back to 12? Yes. <laughs> I don't know who made these page numbers so small, but I can tell you. I don't know, but we should make it bigger. I think the clear got it. I think it was, uh, I think it was a chief that did this. Actually, me. All right. Let me pull up the... Eleven to twelve. Eleven to revenue. Yeah, I'm just yeah. getting to the CIP. Yeah, it's page six on the CIP. Okay, so we got revenues on page eleven. Any questions about revenues? Council? No. No. All right. We'll move on to expenses on page twelve. Uh, wages, who's paid out of that? would be a little bit of a... Um... We have a quarter of Howie. We have 100% of Ron Wright, a quarter of our maintenance, uh, Dave Coleman, and 100% of Tracy. So that covers your wages and friends benefits. Um, total personnel services, that number's right there. Um, move on to training, travel, any transportation, any issues with uh, those numbers? I don't think so. Council? Nope. Yeah. Um, contractuals, we're pretty much contractually obligated for that. So um, I don't think there's any leeway if any discussion on those numbers. Could you move? Come <laughs> I think we're good on contractual. Do you guys just want to take it paid and like say what you like instead of me going down each one? You just, you just want to look and do tell me what you have any issues with? I'm okay with that. All right. Cancel. Yeah. Any questions on this page? Yeah, I have a question from the right. Go ahead. They're on uh, maintenance of in infrastructure. You got fifteen hundred dollars. Exactly what do you got in maintenance for fifteen hundred bucks on infrastructure? I wish we had about 50000 but um, the street signs come out of that. Yes. Street signs, somebody runs over a street sign, so Drake comes out of that. Street signs, warning signs, barricades, barrels come. Just shut it, 1500 Exactly. <laughs> I mean, is it real? I mean, I know you the wish. I'm sorry, Mr. Lindsay. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, sir. You said you wish you had 40 or 50. I mean, does it need to go up? I mean, just a little to help? Honestly, for the it's been a 10-year ongoing because the revenues for street construction do not go up. It's based on the gas tax and licensing. So we basically only get capital to do any kind of repair, like we'll, we'll see when we come up to. It's the general fund used to, to have to transfer money into the street construction for this purpose of helping the street department out with getting some of these um, items here. So I just would like to say that in the future, I'd like to probably start working on trying to get some of our things uh, repaired or replaced that we start that we got going bad to help out with that because we'll never get there with the street department. Uh, it used to house five individuals solely, 100% wages. Now we're down to two total. 1.25. Ron and quarter. And Tracy. And Tracy. Yes, 
so we're down to two and a quarter or two and a half where we used to be five personnel out of this. So big change. And, and, but I'm sorry about that. I just wanted to give some information. In, in 2016, you guys spent almost 16000 and then it just kind of plummeted. So. When, when it's not budgeted, we just decided we'll try to make do with what we got. So do you guys think we should would, use the budget would, for that? Would you like for more money to be in there besides 40 or 50000 I mean, Mr. Lindsay, we're going to start this way to see what everyone's suggestions are. Uh, Mr. Shammy, have any suggestions or what you guys think about increasing it to? Well, what do you think, Adam? Would be uh, something that you'd be comfortable with? You know, I, I could just you know spitball a number out there right now, but something like uh, I haven't really had a chance to dig into because it's been quite a few years. But transfer it in. Five. She said no money transfer it Well, in, in the end, in the end, uh, two hundred. You only, you only have thirty-seven hundred dollars yeah. in unique balance. So if you go anywhere above thirty-seven, you're going to have the transfer. I think what we were so going to require a general fund transfer. If you guys do anything over. 37116. Right. So, what do you all think? Transfer any general fund money in or leave it by? Leave it. Leave it by? Just leave it. All right. This will give me this year to maybe do some digging, find out what we really need, and maybe look at next year that I could ask for some help early, early on for 2019. Any other questions, Mr. Cook? In all of our software, do we have a list of our equipment, age, condition, when we're looking to replace it? On the fixed assets? Yeah, I'm, I'm speaking of trucks, backhoe, et cetera, et cetera. That is on the audit list. That is part of the software that we're trying to put in the capital to upgrade that we, we get a hit on it. No, we don't have a very good asset tracking program. We have uh, our asset dates and, and uh, years with our insurance, so we keep that updated every year with moving in and moving out different equipment. But we don't have them set up as formally as we're going to replace this one in this year and that year, unless you have something. Uh, typical, uh, just, I can just give you basics. Typical dump trucks, pickup trucks, their uh, useful life is usually 10 to 12 years. Obviously, you know we exceed useful life. We try to do the best maintenance, which is not, it's not a bad thing. I mean, our equipment lasts 20 years. It does or, or beyond. So we do well at doing that, but we always exceed our useful life. So we don't have a, a plan in place where we can take a truck and get it rotated back and you know um, trade it in for a decent amount of money. We run it from brand new to in the ground and then go get new again. Definitely Ukraine over grade. Council, you guys good with your question? Uh, for capital outlays, you see 18000 I just wanted to ask, is that going to be enough to cover the new dump truck body, or what's the new dump, dump truck body run yet? I'm sorry to hear the last part of your What, what is a dump truck body run? Um, that one, we already got the price. I think it, we're at twelve five. Twelve five. Yeah. And what's the other, like, six grand for estimately just a bucket truck, I see? We have, we have the um, five in there to start putting away for that bucket truck. To get us a new one down the road, if for some reason our other dump body would break on us this year, which we're hoping it doesn't, um, we would probably put that into a major repair. But uh, when I was taking, when people have come through the department, that bucket truck we currently have, we bought it from a used car dealer in Urbana. Yeah. It, it was an old Ohio Edison one. It has saved us because we used to pay local tree companies to take our trees down at five hundred to thousand dollars a pot. We only paid six or seven thousand. City New Palau has really saved the city a ton, a ton of money. Okay. So um, we want to reinvest in another one. So how much is the uh, would a bucket truck run you for, would you estimate? Not brand new, just uh, we we've been seeing them go for about fifteen to twenty thousand for a, a good one. So instead of just putting that six thousand uh, in reserve, we cut that and then in the next year's budget, we if the money's there or we transfer money in, I mean would you be okay with that? I mean, if, if it's just going to sit there, that's 6000 uh, estimately, uh, so, and it doesn't get spent, it goes back to the general fund anyways. And it, so this is a street uh, construction, so it would just stay in the, in the ending fund balance to be able to get towards next 
Sure. So just keep building. That's all right. Yeah. So regardless if it was cut, it would stay there anyhow. So. So you're looking to take your five thousand off your bucket truck, just keep thirteen thousand for accessories. Yeah. Is that what I'm hearing. I think that that's what I would prefer. I don't know how you guys prefer. The money stays there regardless if it's budgeted or not. It doesn't change. How do you guys feel? It's fine with me. Mr. Valley? It's I don't have a problem just leaving it the way it is. Concerns in the state? Yes, Mr. Lowry. How we would actual street repair costs? Would, is, is that in here? There, no. Their street repair cost does not come out of street construction anymore. It's solely street levy. Okay. All right. All right. Any other questions? All right. No. no. Next page. Thirteen. <coughs> state Highway. Any comments, questions, or concerns, Council? Mr. Kitka. I would like to enlighten, I just found this out recently. Um, I actually got uh, somewhat of a detailed information on revenues. Um, ODA, or, yeah, the state does give us revenues for our state highways and the mileage we have in our jurisdiction, and that is to go for cleaning under parts of the bridges, not any of this stuff they do where they paint and re do reconstruction of. But if we have to clear the waterway, if we have to patch the state routes, if we have to do anything with the state routes, that's what that money is for. Council, anything? I mean, we can't really do much with it anyhow. So, all right. Um, and, oh, go ahead. Sorry, the motor vehicle license tax. That's the one from here in town for the five dollars per license fee, right? It's tacked on. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Unfortunately, it goes to the state, and we get a portion back. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Permissive tax. Council, anything? No, um, we're on permission. Yeah. 14. Uh, I really don't don't have anything with this, but I do want to let um, council just be aware. Sometime in the near future with State Highway, we're going to be up for urban repaving program where they'll come back and repave 571 and 235. It will be required to pay 20%. It used to be on a 14, 15 year cycle. We are at that 14, 15. They now leave it up to the municipality to say, hey, we are ready. So just FYI, that's when we are ready to repay 235 and 571, we'll have to have 20% um, kind of saving up in the state highway or uh, general fund to get that taken care of. So I'm trying to plan out, get the five year mark from now to do that. Five years, yeah. okay. So it's not immediately on the horizon. Then. Correct. All right. Then street improvement levy. Council, any comments, questions, or concerns on this one? This is also a levy. Um, I have one, if no one else does. Yeah, uh, I'm still. I see uh, maintenance of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, that's 200000 So, would that money be used like we've used for spinning Willowick? Is that what that's there for this time? Does it be spent this year on? This is, this is for the 2018 various road projects. So we're looking at possible, like, I don't want to call it chip and seal. I know it's not that, but overlay. Overlay, correct. Okay, awesome. And do you know which roads might get that Yeah. We we think we're headed in, in the area of finishing up the Willowick area. Okay. We think we're going to finish that up this year. I haven't, we haven't finally made that decision. I got some final inspections to do, but we think we're going to go ahead and finish that whole development up this year. All right, fantastic. At least try. Any comments, questions? Yeah, Council? just one. One that popped up. I never, I really didn't even think about it, even though we all drive on it every time we come here. What's the chances of getting this redone? <laughs> <laughs> that would be lands and buildings, general fund. <laughs> <one. Yeah. laughs> Moving on, right? Next. <laughs> oh. hey, yeah. Are you satisfied? Hey, we might be able to fill some of those holes with some crushed brick, possibly in the future. We might. What, what about uh, pulling some of that ground, uh, what do I want to say, blacktop from down at the uh, putt putt course down there on 235 and bringing that from up? From what I understand, a lot of that is spoken for. There's a putt putt course at 235. Well, I know, but if it's a lot of it's spoken for. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, like a little bit of parts of it. Yeah, I just like it. Like from what I understand, it's I all putt -putt. a reclamation uh, thing. Because I'd love to get some of that um, stuff. 
it works and doesn't work. Um, I tried it down here next to the um, ballpark. Ballpark and put it in there. It didn't last as long as I thought it was going to last. It kind of just kind of got pushed aside. So, yes, sir. I did. But seriously, though, okay. So that, if in order for that to get repaid, it would come out of the. Would you say the uh, land and buildings? Land buildings. Okay. Yeah. Um, which we'll retract back on Monday when we go back to the budget itself. If we get finished. Okay. Or well, we can get back now for the bike. No, no, we can put it later. All right, so we'll revisit that. Is the driveway in that bad shape? Yeah. It's getting it, there. I, it's getting there. I'm just saying, you know, I don't know if there's, I don't know if when you, when it comes time for you to do some of the streets you're thinking about, if, if you can bunch it up and get a better deal. I mean, you know, you've done such a great job of getting a lot of new equipment in here. It'd be great to just finish it off. But, you know, again, I don't know what it would cost. I could get an estimate when I go to forbidding. I could get what it would cost. Just out of curiosity. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Counselor, any questions on that? <laughs> no. All right. Moving on to page 16. This is emergency ambulance control. We all start to come up the uh, capital A outline for emergency capital. Yeah, counts. You got anything? That one's also one of those ones. Are we? Are we, uh, are we buying a medic this year? That's ambulance operating. I think for ambulance capital. No, for so. capital for EMS capitals, radios, computer equipment, marks ten thousand. New equipment upgrades five thousand. New medic unit of thirty thousand. Uh, but the medic units. We paid for by grant levy fund. So the medic unit, you want to give them an update of what you told me today? Um, we're looking at trying to purchase a new medic this year, but also, too, we found out that the state grant system this year is um, put medics as a high priority for departments. So we have put in for a grant for a new medic. If it was to receive that medic, we would be responsible for 5% 5, 5 of the cost, approximately right around twenty to 25000 Versus $250,000 for a medic. Hey, yeah. What are the odds? So can we get two of them? <laughs> it's one just one through? of those things. Um, uh, we're blessed with a grant writer in our department that's done very well. Uh, he has a really good track record. Uh, he wrote six, six grants for Lima Fire, got four out of the six, and one of those was an engine. Oh, man. Uh, and he's the one that wrote the grants for us last year, and we got the $10,000 grant for uh, SBA masks. Do you want to give a short update on the current state of our medic? Our medic right now, the frontline medic, is seven years old. It has a hundred and a little over 140,000 miles on it. Uh, reason being is it's because of our transport distance. Uh, when you go to transport a patient to Miami Valley one time, that's a 40-mile turnaround for that medic. Mm -hmm. And that medic could do that anywhere from one to five times a day, depending on what the patient's itself um, maintenance wise it's it has its own maintenance you know issues just like any other uh, piece of equipment uh, we replaced the airbags on the back end of it eight times um, when I say airbags it's to where the crew opens up the back door of the medic the back of the medic sits down lower to load and unload the patient um, we replaced those bags eight times because they it's a design flaw um, that they no longer use some part of the suspension rubs that bag and blows it. Uh, we're very fortunate that one of our lieutenants, Lieutenant uh, Elvin Adamson, is a mechanic and he can replace them. So we bought them and we keep them. We can keep at least one, one or two bags in the station. And if they blow, we call him and he comes out and, and replaces it for us, which saves us a tremendous amount of money and labor. Um, but like I said, the medic itself, it's. It's getting more out by year by just about a thousand by miles. Right. I remember when we first got that, that was Mike and I's first year. On the uh, and the reason that medic was bought was the other frontline medic at that time got uh, totaled in the accident. Car accident, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Council, any questions on pages 16? All right. Moving on. Page 17 is the revenues, which we can't touch anyhow, so. Yeah, push on to page 18. And for 18, if an emergency ambulance capital was, was an automatic $15,000, over $15,000 savings a year, 
this year was a little bit less than that because the um, to go to the county we had to they had to purchase a VHF radio and antenna for the dispatch center to be able to simulcast our dispatching on marks in VHF to open up the house phones. Uh, and they just went ahead and financed that five thousand, which was the price of the radio and the antenna, into our first year contract. And then starting in, uh, next year that five thousand will come back in, back into us. Go ahead. On the uh, EMS billing and collection fees, that's got uh, that jumped ten thousand from last year. The, I guess why? Because it's an estimation. Is it for me? It's just an estimation. Did, well, we probably had the same line item amount in seventeen as well. Is that my true statement? Yeah. That? Would it be possible to cut that by five then to bring it down to twenty? We don't know we, how many ambulances run through the two. It's, 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 it's one shot in the dark. One shot in the dark. Okay. Now, last year, our run volume this past year was down some. Next year, it could be up. We're already at 126 runs for the year. Like more? Mr. Bridge said, that 25000 was in there last year, too. Oh, but, was it? But just the that's the budget part. And okay. you're looking at the actual. So we always okay. update with what we actually spent. Now we, we use that as our history. Okay. But yeah, on, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Just let them go. You're good. Okay. Right. Anything else on the page? Mm -hmm. Oh, you heard something? No, oh, sorry. Okay. No, I just was going to look at Oh, okay. I was like, oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, page 19. Fire control equipment. Can't touch the revenues. Somebody would like me to read down the list of capital improvements planned for fire capital? Oh, we. We have that here, but if you'd like to, yes. Sure. 20,000 for burnout and gear, 8,000 for radio upgrades, so 20,000 total. Counts on anything? Well, we can't touch action, so. Again, also with the bottom of your capital, we've also put in for a uh, AFG grant for that, also for this year. And if we was to get that, it would be the same thing. We would have a percentage to pay, but it would give it would uh, a lot as 26 uh, sets of new rear, new bunker gear, fitted bunker gear. We can't touch page 20 with the revenue, so on to page 21. Council, any questions, comments, or concerns on this one? Nope. All right. Moving on again. Health lobby. We can't touch that one either. That one's levy lock. Peace levy. Revenues we can't touch, but uh, peace levy itself on page 24, we can. Council, any comments, questions, or concerns? Yes. Okay. Sir, I wish one of those deputies here. Personal safety uniforms, uh, personal safety equipment. Is that, I mean, what are we responsible for as far as the deputies? Um, if they wear it? I mean, as far as, you know, like dash cameras, guns. Safety vests. Safety vests, anything operational. So really, I mean, we are responsible. even the guns are our responsibility, too? We supply the backup. They supply their main uh, EDC. Oh, what they carry and their um, sorry um, and the shop. They supply everything, but they back up. New Carlisle pays for a backup for each ship. Would dash cameras be under that category? Uh, dash dash cams will go in our if they're going our car. They will be our responsibility. Absolutely. But would it be under that fund? Um, under police uh, uniforms and personal safety equipment. Um, we could we. we Probably have some leeway to pull it out of um, anything, probably under supplies and materials. Um, I don't know if it'd be in uniform and personal safety equipment per se. Um, anything over 2,500 is going to have to be capital. No, 21, 22, 2,500 going to be a capital expense. So if that's the direction council wants us to go in to get dash cameras in our car, then we need to amend our. CIP to do so. And I want to say that we got that quote a couple of years ago when it was, do you remember off the top of your head, I think, or about three or four thousand dollars a year? Yeah. No, up to ten. Yeah, it was 
because they were not cheap dash cameras. Oh yeah, the good, yeah, the good ones that they got in there. Yeah, they're under. They're they're not quite ten, but they're close. That's why we settled with the uh, body cams. I remember. Now, Mr. Kiko is starting the process to get a new police cruiser. Um, is that part of the? Is that one of the options that it in there? Negative. Okay, so it's definitely not the market. I would personally like to, whether, you know, I understand we probably shouldn't go and, and back all of our previous cruisers, but if we're going to get a new one starting off, I think we should put that into the rotation of starting off with one. The only thing I can say is install on a new car is cheaper for everything. I mean, the, the, they put our March radio in from an old car to the new one for virtually nothing because they already have the guts out of it. So if that goes that route, it is cheaper to install in a new build than it is to install in an already previous build. Just step on up. And the flip side of this is our other two cars don't have our newer ones. None of them. You know, so we'll have one that has it and two other ones that don't, which is fine. We'll just have to allocate for capital improvement on those cars at a later date. Is that something you'd be okay with? Uh, I would like to move forward with starting. Now, I thought we had a discussion with the dash cams too, because since they wear these things, how prevalent was the dash cam? I thought that even the sheriff said that she wanted to move more towards body cams as yeah. opposed to dash cams. Even the former sheriff was that way as well. So can we put this on hold maybe until I have a conversation? Or, or if we could get the, one of the deputies or the sergeant here at the next meeting maybe just to talk on it. I'll reach out to the sheriff's office. Because I'd be interested in looking at it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, because obviously there's different situations where each camera is going to have a better use. Well, one, one's going to kick on when they're pulling up behind someone and right. this one doesn't come on until they step out of the car. Yeah, so yeah, that'd be great if we come back to it. So check with the sheriff, find out what direction yeah. they're going to go. And get back. Yeah. It, Not a problem. With the capital outlay, it's 82000 How much does the cruiser cost? Oh, I have that. Uh, you want, Mr. Kick yeah, the, the new cruiser just got the price. State bid price is 28374 And to outfit that cruiser this year is going to be right around $8,000. So, are we going to buy two new cruisers with the eighty-two thousand in capital? No, capital is ten thousand for equipment upgrade, forty thousand for a new patrol vehicle, twelve thousand for equipment for patrol vehicles, and twenty thousand for a new substation location. So, um, before we go any further with that, substation location. Yes, um, I would recommend cutting that um, at this point um, down a little bit. So the sheriff's substation currently we're at is not in the best shape. Um, I already had a meeting with uh, Chief Deputy uh, Russell. Um, we are looking at a different home for the sheriff's office. Um, they had passed around letting them use an office out of the city building, and we had also talked about moving them down to the cemetery house as well. If we move into the cemetery house, that's where your capital outlay is coming in because we would have to run a gas line to correct it because uh, it's based off for paint. So now, um, my theory with this is if it works out, I would like to have them into the city building. That will help reduce costs across the city building. Um, but I would have to have, would like to have another meeting with Chief Deputy Russell to get some guarantees down. Um, I don't want the city building used as a Western Clark County substation where I have deputies coming in and out all nights of the hours. It will specifically used for the contracted deputies that our taxpayers pay for. Um, so um, with that one, um, I think we'll probably be very safe cutting that 20000 down to something a lot more appropriate. When we were doing the CIP, I didn't know what direction we were going. So I was just kind of um, obviously budgeting to get them down to the cemetery substation. I think it's only the cemetery is going to work. 5000 is there going to be in the city building? Um, I would not even, I think that's still too high. 1000 Um if it's, I'll be honest with you, it probably can be cut out all together. All together? All 20 grand? All right. Because if they move to the city building, it's just, I mean, they're not going to spend more than 1000 because they're going to be in the city. Anything over 2500 is not considered a capital expense, so I don't think they're going to take it down 2600 Do we have the room with the city building? Oh, okay. Um, there will be, yes. They only need one room. They show up, they do the reports, they leave. They don't, their, their, their perfection is to be in a car patrolling the streets. They'll have to do some reporting, um, but what I, we also find too is that a lot of people just stop at our substation to do their reporting. They may not be a contracted deputy with the city of New Car Lot. All right. Well, Council, how do you feel about cutting it down to 20? I think it's a great idea. 
You have a problem with that? No, not at all. Because we, we had talked about it. I was <laughs> from there at all. Um, we can go ahead and cut it. I will have it revisit the conversation with Chief, De uh, Chief Deputy Russell. And we'll let you know at the next council meeting if we do need to put a little bit more in there or if we can keep it cut down to zero. Is council okay with cutting it? No, I'm assuming. Zero. Yep. Yes. Yeah, it seems that way. Sixty. Mr. Lavery wants to spend that 20 grand to buy a couple of uh, camcorders for the, for the cruise. All right, uh, so moving on. Anything well, else on the police? I would just be very honest with you guys. I want you guys to look at your wages and your personnel and your fringe benefits. Now, um, that is actually a quarter of my pay and a quarter of Colleen's pay. Yeah. So I will let council discuss that. If that were to be moved, it will go back into the general fund. And I had mentioned at the last budget work session that moving forward, um, mine and Colleen's goal is to um, have the um, different departments help pay for my salary and this is uh, Harris's salary. Um, this is a first step to do so. Um, I will be honest with you. Um, I will have to look into this, and the colleague will have to look into this to make sure the lovely language permits this to stay. If it doesn't, we'll have to move it out. If council wants me to move it out, we can move it back to the general fund. Um, so I will let you guys decide what you want to do with that. Do you spend 25% 20 of your time with it? I, I know you most definitely probably do. I'll be honest with you. Howie does a lot of the police work. I mean, he does a lot of the car ordering the cars, um, but I do administer in a way. It's not so much that, all right, we're taking a quarter out, so you do 25% of the work. It's just an easy way to split the number. You know, we don't want to get to ace, you know. Um, I'm not good with fractions when it gets down to that kind of stuff. So Colleen and I just, you know, we thought 25% was good. Moving forward, we want to also be paid out of the fire and EMS funds, you know. Um, but you have, to, this is not you, but the city has historically relied on the general fund to pay these wages when it really could be separated out. You know, the city doesn't practice re reimbursables a lot, reimbursements, you know, which is another thing that's going to have to be changed or putting X amount of uh, revenue from a specific enterprise fund, whether it be water or wastewater, into a capital improvement fund. You know, so I think in the past the city was practicing those methods, but when it got real tight with money, a lot of things changed. So how do you feel about them being cut out of the funds if you want to? We'll start with Mr. Cobb and shift the way back this way to Mr. Shammy. How do you feel about Mr. Bridge and Mrs. Harris being paid out of the police fund? I don't know. Mr. Cook? I think it should be. Uh, it's, it's mainly an accounting situation that's becoming more of a trend with the cities. Mr. Lindsay? No comments. <laughs> I, I saw the color of his face. I, I support it. I mean, I'm okay with it too. Mr. Hey, okay. okay. Mr. Shammy? Okay. All right. Um, if we do take it out, it will be because the lovely language or some of the authors may have an issue with it, but I will definitely keep counsel abreast as to what we find out. All right. Sounds good. Any other comments on the police levy? Yeah. All right. General bond retirement covered both of those already? Yep, it is 25 and 26. So 27 is revenue which we can't touch. So can, I, can I interrupt for one second? Yes. Um, what we have left are some pretty, the water and wastewater. We really don't have that much of the budget left, and we have a whole work session scheduled for next week. Um, Mr. Mayor, I will let you decide how you want to move forward. I'm just um, making everyone aware that we do have a whole full budget work session next week as well. And how do you guys want to handle this? We're going to stop at 9 and thought, so. I said, man, we're going to okay with that. We're yeah. finishing up on the following Monday. Yeah. Okay, with you. Yeah. I agree. All right. I would anticipate it taking no longer than maybe an hour, an hour and a half to finish up. All right, fantastic. And then we can make our run through, right? Yeah, that's good. All right. One second. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We got to go back. We got to turn. We got to all the kind of stuff we got to do. Where is my counsel? 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 Where is the last thing to say is executive sessions, none tonight. Yes. And Mr. Lowry. Uh, Mayor, where we adjourn? Uh,